Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. In this video, let's try to understand how we can create a new database and a table in MySQL. First, let's start with the installation of required softwares like MySQL Server and MySQL Workbench. Later, let's try to understand how this creation of database and table can be done in MySQL. And the purpose of this video is, it's usual for a data scientist or a machine learning engineer to work with a database. And if you are working on a client project, that's how they are going to share their data with you. They are not probably going to share you some CSV files or Excel file that you can read the data and work on. So it's very important for us to know how we can connect to this database and tables that they provide. Okay, so this is the purpose of this uh, video. So once we are clear with this database creation and the table, in the next video, I'll explain you how you can load a table from a database to a pandas data frame okay so this is the agenda and let's get started with the installation of these softwares so first for this installation as i said you need mysql server and mysql workbench so just go to google and search mysql server and you will see this download mysql community server so in this link you can see this so there is a zip archive for uh, 64 bit so we have this but i'm not going to download this rather i'll go to this uh, go to download page where i can install this installer okay so i'll go to this go to download page so you can see this msi installer you can uh, give this 428 mb so just download this but i have already downloaded this so this will uh, go to this page so you don't have to log in or sign up just go to this no thanks just start my download so this will start your download so i'm cancelling this as i have already downloaded this installer so this is about like 438 uh, mb size so i'll just show you the installation process which is fairly simple So this will uh, install the required softwares for us, the servers, workbench and all the required uh, softwares. Let's wait for this. Yeah. So this shouldn't take uh, much time. So once this installation is done, let's go ahead and create this database and table that we need. So creating this tables, you can either create your tables with your own data or you can like upload some CSV files or Excel files, like anything is suitable for you. So you have like different options so developer default so this will like install these things mysql server mysql shell router and workbench connections and so on right and then you have the server only client only but for our development purpose we can just choose this developer default which is like the most common used for a developer so you wouldn't need the other things for now so i'll just give this next okay so these are all the packages and the softwares that will be installed so i'll just give this execute so all these things will be installed so this should take a few seconds so i'll just pass this video and resume resume this once this installation is done okay so the installation is complete and it took like three or four minutes so i'll just give next so we will probably go with almost all the default settings so i'll give next here you can maybe take a note of this port numbers and so on so let's give this next this can be this use strong password encryption so i'll give next again so here's the thing so sometimes uh you may not see this page so if you have already installed mysql servers or like workbench what happens is uh if you uninstall it and reinstall it again there is a folder that's created in your program files 86 or your program files in your c disk or your program data so you need to go there and delete those mysql folders if not it asks you to give the older password that you have used so if you don't want that to happen just go to the folders that i have just like said now so program files program files 86 and your uh, program data so here i need to give the password for my uh, you know root user let's say that i'll just give a simple password as admin so i can like change this later like give any password you want so you will use this later to connect to your database from your python environment so i'll again type my password so here the user will be root if you want you can like create another uh, user here so for now i'll just like go with this and click next okay so you can see the standard system account and so on so we have mysql 8 let's give us Okay, so we are giving like full uh, access to this give this next so once you execute this all these uh, steps will be executed let's give this so i'll just pass this 
Hmm. So this just took like a few seconds. Now let's click this finish and give next. Yeah, so this should be all. So here you can give your password and check if this is connecting. So I'll just click this admin. So you can see the username. Give this check. So the connection is successful and you can give next. So again, give this execute. Right. Okay. Let's see. So this will start my MySQL workbench. So in MySQL workbench only like will be creating the databases and adding the tables. Maybe I'll just like close this for now. Let's uh, open our search bar and search for MySQL. So you will see this MySQL shell workbench and so on. So I'll give this community edition my MySQL workbench 8.0. Let's go here. So this is where we'll be creating a database. So local instance MySQL root, and this is my local host port. So let's double click this, and this will ask for the password. So use the password that you have used. So I have used admin. Let me just check this. Yeah. Okay. Right. So this is where we can uh, create our databases so it, it is as i said it's fairly simple so it's no complex at all so you can see this uh, bars on administration and there is also a tab called as schemas so sometimes it, the default will be in this uh, administration so if you want to create the databases and other things just like give the schemas where you can see so these are some sample databases that's available so you can uh, give this uh, i symbol to see the info of this like the name of the databases and so on so you can like close this so this is the part where we will, we will write our queries in sql so you can uh, open this drop down and you can see the tables that's available here and you have the you know tables that that's present here and, and below that you can see the columns and so on so let me close this and yeah now i'll go to this create a new schema in the connected server so this is how you can create a database so just give this or you can also right click here and say create schema so i'll just give this and the i'm going to name this database as sample underscore database okay so these things can be the default setting and i'll give apply right so you don't have to change anything this is basically the query to create the database that is generated based on our requirement just give apply okay so this will create a database right so you can close this now you can see the database if you are not seeing this you can just like right click this and, and just give refresh all so this has created the database but we don't have any tables within this so here you can see tables but there is like nothing nothing within this now let's try to create a table right so you can create table with some queries add some data create like columns but we are not going to use that we are just going to directly upload some csv files that will act as our tables so come to this tables and right click and give uh, table data import wizard so here you can browse to your csv location so here i'm going to so i, I just have this diabetes uh, data set that we usually work on and the art this is data set i'll just like uh, give this particular data i'll also give the link for this data set in the disc video description you can check this out next now uh, yeah so i'm going to create a new table i'm not going to use any existing tables as i don't have any so here uh, this is the database I'm, in which I'm going to uh, upload this table to sample underscore database and here you can name the table so I'll name this table as diabetes underscore data right so if you already have a table and you want to replace this just uh, you know use this checkbox I don't want to drop any tables as it doesn't exist there so diabetes underscore data and let's give next right so this just gives a sample of the data that is available in your file and you can see the data types and the column names as well so if you want you can change the data type as well if it doesn't like kind of found something you know right so maybe i'll just give this as int okay so this let, let this be double let's give this next and these things will be performed once you click this next right so our table is getting imported so this shouldn't take much time right so this process is completed so let's give this next so 768 records has been imported basically the number of rows has been imported finish right so now we have this so you now you couldn't see the tables just right click here and give refresh all you could you could see the table that we have just uh, uploaded right so i'll just like close this drop down for now yeah so now we have this sample database so i'll go to this tables and this diabetes data right so you, here you can see the columns uh, all the columns available and so on 
if you want to just print something from this table uh, you can just like hover over this table name which is diabetes data and you can see the symbol which says like yeah once you click this this will like print like all the uh, you know rows from your uh, table in your particular database so we have select so we are basically executing a select query so asterisk we usually say this to say that i want to you know show everything or something like that so select everything from this database and this table so sample database dot diabetes data which is our table name and you can see the you know result here so we can see the columns that's present in this particular table yeah so that is how you can upload a table to your database so let me also upload another table let's collapse this and here i'll again come to this uh table data import so let me upload like this our disease data set as well i'll give this next so let's uh, put this in the same database and let's call this as <coughs> art disease data okay so let's give next right so here we have all the things but the first column is age but we are seeing some symbols so it's probably due to some encoding but i'll show you how you can change this column name using some query for now let's just give this next next so this will import this you can practice some queries here as well uh, in the data that we have so here we have like 303 records you can like basically perform some joins if that is possible like do like few things like take some other sample tables and work on it as well right so yeah now i'll just close this one and again you couldn't see this r disease data just right click here and give this refresh all so this will refresh and you will see this r disease data set as well let's print all these things as well so here you can see this age is there right so let's kind of rename this <coughs> i'm going to say uh use uh, here we have to say the database which is sample I mean this is not the only way you can also have like other queries to do this I'm just like using this one so use sample database which is our database name and then I'll say alter mm. now table so the table name is our this is data and uh, okay so it should be at this is data so i'm just like selecting this database and this table now i'm going to say change column so here we have to give the old name so here the old name is this so i'll copy this field name yeah so this is the column name and i'm going to say new name which is just age and then we have to mention the data type here the data type is integer okay let's do this so we are mentioning the column this wrong okay so there shouldn't be a semicolon so use this particular database selecting this table so i'm altering this column from this to this age let's select this and run okay now uh, i'll just close this one and let's in the data now you can see the name has changed so this is how you can like basically perform some queries uh, I, I don't have to tell you like anything on like what you can do with this particular query so there are like a lot of things that you can do uh join like a couple of tables see the results and so on right uh, it's not necessary for a data scientist to know in detail about the sql queries and so on but it's actually a good to I'm, I'm not saying that you shouldn't know it basically you can do all those things in pandas as well but it's kind of a good to have and most people kind of expect you to be good in sql as well and and for a data scientist role or a machine learning role so this is also one of the key skills that they test you on interviews as well so it's it's good to know this skill right but even if you don't know this in a higher level or you know in a detailed way 
still you can do this in panda so it, it shouldn't be a blocker for you but i strongly suggest you to learn sql as well okay so this is how you basically can create your database and tables in mysql workbench and mysql server so i hope everyone is clear with this please do practice this and uh, in the next video let's try to see how we can connect to this particular database of sample database and load these two tables to our pandas data frame using some connections in python okay so that's it from my side and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching